Everybody needs a home. For me, home is a place where I can be with myself. A place I can depend on. A place where I feel safe and loved. In this sense, Lebanon is not home. And that's a problem. Home is a place where you spend the majority of your time. I spent my whole life in Lebanon, yet I feel like it's become less and less like a home and more like a hotel. A temporary settling place with no personal surrounding. My bag packed, ready to leave at a moment's notice. We are eight teenagers coming from different backgrounds, from different religions, and we are here to say what we have always been afraid to say. Dear Lebanon, if you don't listen to us, we will be forced to leave, just like so many have done before us. Anyone who's ever left couldn't see a future in this country anymore, and they couldn't find what they were looking for. Opportunities, unity, and peace. But we love this place. We call it home. We don't want to give it up. We want to change. I want a country where police officers don't ignore a crime after they get paid $50. I want a country where everyone is heard, not just the ones who have money. I want to be able to thrive in my country rather than have to go somewhere else. I want to go inside a cab without being questioned about my background or religion. I want a country where I can go out of the home as a whole piece and come back as a whole piece. I want a country where I can live in peace. I want freedom fighters, not gangsters. I want a country where I'm not afraid to speak my mind. It's hard to think that a country as beautiful as Lebanon could destroy itself. Haven't we learned from the past? So many people are living in a state of fear. While we were working on this movie, seven bombings happened. Innocent people die every week. And I really don't see how killing our own people is a logical thing to do, you know? I mean, I don't think religious and political differences should be a factor in deciding who lives and who doesn't. We just need to open up our eyes and realize that the violence has to stop. Because of uh, the situation in this country, so we had to take some security measures at school. Uh, it's forbidden to bring uh, bags. We should uh, either carry our books or put them in a transparent bag. We were shocked because we didn't expect that the country would be this bad in, 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 in this situation. <laughs> it is too much uh, and uh, pressure that, we're, that they're having. And we're holding the books and coming to school and we've had enough. I think that staying at home would be the best, or your friends come over, or you go to your friend's house. Because you can just, you can order food, and you can watch a movie, I mean, you don't have to go to a public place to have fun. I don't really feel safe anymore going out with my friends at any given time of the week. Like, with, there's young people dying now, innocent bystanders that are victims to bombs who are targeting politicians. And you could be walking or having fun with your friends, and all of a sudden a bomb erupts and your life your life ends. So basically like the possibility that that could happen to me is really uh, scary and I don't I just I'm starting to uh, be a lot more careful. The bombs, some of them have happened near my house and some of them are happening in some of the most safe areas and they're finding bombs in like the coordination in Humra. They found a bomb next to my house and, a few days yeah, ago. And that's where we hang out. So how could you feel safe when you when you could get killed at any Friday night when you're going out with your friends. And I'm always vigilant whenever I'm walking, looking for cars, and thinking which one is gonna explode me next. You know? We 
have this joke, me and my sister, like every time I check that everyone's okay and that, that they're okay and then at the end when I have to go back to class I'm like, I'm glad you're alive and then she says, I'm glad you're alive and it's like sort of, you know, sarcastically talking about the situation because you can't, if you take it seriously, it's just gonna make you very depressed but if you try to laugh about it, and I think a lot of Lebanese people try to laugh about it There has been so many explosions that they actually made an application for it It's called I'm Alive where you can connect through Facebook or Twitter and tell your friends that you're still alive and you can even check if your friends are still alive too which is, it's the only app in the, in the whole world, you know you We're the only people apps. who need it It's true It's ironic and sad at the same time You hear about a bomb and you say oh, like, just, it's another one so we don't, really, we don't really care about it anymore and That's very dangerous when people like don't care anymore because it's, it's kind of like to show that people don't have hope of changing that anymore. They just kind of accept it. Yeah, and I think every, with every bomb, people lose more hope of improving Lebanon. When an explosion happens, I feel like I want to go to the street and see a revolution happening, you know? Like, I want to see the youth going and screaming, oh, we don't want this anymore. I sometimes like think about putting the whole parliament on fire, you know, to burn everything. <laughs> Every, every politician to tell them that we want to live I don't I don't want us to like to get used to it well this is the place uh, this is exactly the place where uh, the last picture of these four guys was taken because one of them died in an explosion that happened here and they were just regular guys from my school who were just innocently hanging here and they had nothing to do with politics or, or religion or fights and one of them died because of politics it was so surreal to have someone you know and you saw you see every day just not exist anymore because someone decided that this politician has to die now When I found out about the explosion, I uh, I was really I was shocked because I, at first I like I, I I thought that people were joking or something because I, we never think that people we know could die in an explosion and you never think that you know people you see every day at school can can be affected by by something you you don't really think about as personally you know you you think of explosions. And then you think of the people you know as safe and guarded and this explosion really showed that that's not true and that it could kill anyone. After this bomb happened, like four days later, another bomb happened in Dahi. And when that bomb happened, I started thinking, like, I think the first death doll was four people, I think. and. When I heard that four people, I started imagining four families and four circles of friends and four human beings that are just like me dying and they don't exist anymore and all their dreams and all their achievements and all the things they wanted to do, they can't do them anymore. And it's, it, was very, it was very shocking to see how the difference in how I thought. Like before the explosion, I would just, you know, take it sort of casually, which is wrong, I realize, but not very casually, but in a way that, yeah, it's normal, it's a thing that happens every day. But then you start realizing that it's not supposed to happen every day, and it's not normal for it to happen every day. And a lot of young people in my school, almost mo all of them who knew Muhammad, started rebelling against the idea that we're not, we're not gonna take this anymore, and we're gonna do something. To my heart with a path so dark A bomb is how a year starts Heaven's guard took him how much We lost the teen and gained an angel Lost the dream and the nation Deep inside you are immortal
An angel among mortals More political propagandas led to death Hidden agendas to kill the rest Murdering civilians is normal I suggest You wanna pull the trigger? Be my guest You rip the heart from the chest and place it in the house of death Yet the child you took is the reason we'll unify Rise above sectarianism, both you and I Symbolize peace and plant the seed in mankind Dear God, you wanted heaven to be a better place So you took Muhammad to your space And we accepted our fate, so have faith Well, uh, the funny thing is like, I, I didn't even know the guy But he was 16 and he he wasn't supposed to die, man. Seriously, that's that's my country. I doubt so. I don't want this. So as I had the pen writing like down the lyrics to the song, uh, I was like, it's like I'm talking to a story that really affected me. And you can relate to the subject because I'm a teen myself, so it could happen to me. I would have been there. I would have been dead. And who would care? So basically, this is the studio. And we're gonna perform a song about the politics in Lebanon and the society overall. Absat will do the Arabic verse and I will do the English verse. Okay, beat please. I found myself in hip hop. I found like I can express who I am. I can show the people who I am. I can share my thoughts, my beliefs, and everything. So hip hop reflects the life of politics in a way that is smooth somehow, you know, to the ear. Like, uh, in a way that shows you, oh, so that's what's happening in Lebanon, this is the politics, but in a, in a musical way. We're singing for a goal, we're trying to make a change. بتجول ضواحي المدينة عم فتش على اثار بلاقي عيال مشرد حزينة حاملة اخبار واسرار عم يطمحوا بصيروا ظهيروا مثل مراد على نمدار همهم الوحيد انه يحصنوا معيشة اهل الدار. I believe that the term politics in Lebanon is directly linked to lies. Politicians promise the people a lot, but they give them nothing but fake hopes. Our so-called leaders aren't leaders. Because no true leader whatsoever would want his country to turn into hell on earth. اللي بيفكر بينداس تحت الاجران فالمكان الوحيد المنصف هو الجنة طب كيف بقول لبنان جنة البلدان وعنا الحالات معممة وين مكان المصاري بتحكي من هيك ما بيحكي الفقير او بيحكي وما بينسمع كونهم كلهم فريق حك فقد الوعي لواعي عم يتحكم بيعمل حاله دكتور هو ضروري يتحكم بيتخانوا على الشاشة تحت الطاولة مسكين الايد ورجال اديان بس بيطلعوا بيحكوا على العيد some say politics must go on like this for the stability of the country. But how stupid is it to believe that there is no alternative at all to this corrupt system? The problem about politics here is that it only serves the needs of the politicians and not the people. Democracy only exists as a word and hardly as an action. You become someone because you belong to a certain sect, party or family and not because you have the skills to lead a country. And then there is the media, a brainwashing machine. It's like the match that ignites the fire. It shows you lies that you believe is truth. This breaks the society to pieces. Each politician has a channel of his own that he uses to show his good sides and the bad sides of the other teams. This leads to nothing but chaos. You may say I am politically indifferent, but that is for a reason. There are so many sects in, in Lebanon. I think there's around 19 or 18, I think. Yeah, I guess 19. Yeah. I can only name like three. Three or four. Like there's, yeah. there's, okay, there's Shia. Yeah. Sunni. Yeah. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can see the religious the religious influence in everything you do. You can see it in, in when, you're, when you go for a job, the person might not really like your religion. Um, you can see it when with who your parents want you to, to hang out with. No one's really born like thinking, oh, I'm not gonna, uh, I'm, there's no way I'm gonna fall in love or I'm, there's no way I'm gonna date someone who's, who's not from my political or my religious views. It's, it's, it's just the influence that, that they, uh, that's uh, put on them from the older generation. For instance, 
instance, I dated someone from uh, other religion. We stayed like eight months together, and then my mom told me that if you are planning to continue with this person, uh, delete this uh, idea from your mind because he's from another religion. Warne uh, Orthodox, Catholic. You're kind of proud of it, like. I'm from this sect, so like I'm special, I'm the correct one, so yeah, I should be proud of it. It's like all of them are the correct ones, so I guess we're all correct. Yeah. <laughs> no one's wrong. Guys, yeah, yeah, no, no, Wikipedia and Futa Wikipedia. Truth, is that? Futa Wikipedia at the telephone, I said, I had to 18 sects and that one. 19. 18? 19. Sunni, Shia. Greek Orthodox, Maronite, uh, Alawiti, Amer Am Armenian Catholic, <laughs> Armenian Orthodox, uh, me. Yeah, we forgot uh, about the Armenians. Jewish, Druze, Syria Catholic? I'm a Muslim. Uh, I'm not that religious. I'm kind of moderate. I believe whatever I believe in, what is reasonable. When I meet people from other religions, I don't really care about the religion thingy or sects or anything. I just think of people as people. So like Sunni, Shia, Druze, Catholic, Maronite, Orthodox, Armenian, Catholic, Jewish, Protestant, Latin. I'm not religious at all, and I was raised in my. Both my parents are. Um, my mom's Christian, my dad's Muslim. And they're also non they're also non religion religious. I have several best friends and that are that are really really religious and that really doesn't that's not that's not really an issue. We, we always hang out and we talk and we and that never comes up um, in, in any of our conversations. Everybody talks about religions and uh, do uh, a fuss about it. It's not worth all the fuss. We should be calm about it and keep the religion for, for ourselves and not uh, in public. Religion is what, for, it what, is what formed me and was my guide towards uh, being a better person. Islam doesn't teach us how to make bombs. It actually teaches us how to love. We should have a secular system here, especially in Lebanon, so that we don't look at each other from a religious perspective. If I could make a new country, a new Lebanon, I would make it a country with, with no religion and no politics, a country where there's diversity and equality. Like they people like uh, like when they're gonna help each other, they don't ask which sect they are or which religion. They just help. I wanted to join like the scouts, but that the the scouts was it belonged to a church, but it was because it was uh, in a certain area. My dad uh, by that my dad knows that that area is for a certain sect, so that's the reason why he didn't let me join the scouts because of the sect. Like they're so into politics and stuff. We wouldn't say that to our kid, like, no, don't go to the scouts because it, uh, it's a certain sect. No, we wouldn't care about it. Politics and religion, they caused many problems and many wars. And if there wasn't that, there wouldn't have been wars and stuff. I have no idea what you're saying. It's Miss Team USA's I believe that all the politicians in Lebanon do will never do anything productive or good for Lebanon and because of that I don't see a reason for supporting someone who's not gonna do anything good or bring about a positive change in Lebanese society I think what mostly in the end they're doing is destroying the country because they're fighting against each other and they don't understand that we're not we're not like separate groups we're all one country the older generation isn't really looking out for their children which are the future they're not really Caring about what, what the effects that happen whenever there's a whenever there's a bomb and they're killing, they're killing their youths and they don't understand that the youths are the future of the country and by doing this they're encouraging us to leave. They see us as people who aren't mature enough to understand this or that, 
and they think they, they just tell us that they know best and we shouldn't interfere with politics because we're too young. Well, I don't think that the adults do see the future of their of this country in us and I don't think that we see the future of this country in ourselves. So, I don't think that you know, it's it's kind of hard for this country to have a future. I see a dead end to Lebanon's future. We have tried to speak up and nobody listened to us. No one cared about us. The best solution would be to leave the country, find another place to call home. And hopefully, one day, the governors will notice that without us, Lebanon will die and will lose all its power because we are its power. But we are not alone. Not only teenagers claim a better Lebanon. So we met two guys that are a kind of role models for us. We wanted to know what they think about the situation in our country. And we wanted some advice for the change we are longing for. You resigned as a minister because you recognized that the Lebanese politics cannot be changed, perhaps. Um, why is it so hard to change the country's uh, politics? We have a huge issue with the system. Our political system, our constitutional system, it is not working. Honestly, it is not working. I am one of those who were sitting at the uh, Council of Ministers uh, meeting, uh, and I felt to what extent sometimes you are weakened just because you don't belong to a political group. I've seen what you're talking about at the university level, where in the elections, the people with no one, like me, for example, they were not like, uh, they were attacked by the, the other parties because they did not want to vote, uh, they did not, they did not want to participate as, you know, one of the parties. I, it's too bad to see, yeah, to see yeah. that. Amar, let me, let me, uh, if I may, tell you that you're, you're not no one. I mean, you're, you don't belong to a structure, you don't belong to a political group. And therefore, you feel that you don't belong anywhere and that you don't exist. If all those who think like you do are able to gather in a structure, they will be stronger. And that's what, what, uh, what is lacking. We don't have structure, any structure, to absorb uh, those who are like you, Amar. Uh, they feel that they don't belong here or there. What would you tell me, for example, if I, was, if I say that I'm planning to immigrate? I wouldn't. I'll tell you why. Because I, I believe in freedom of choice. Many Lebanese people would like to go abroad to study. And studying abroad is an excellent um, experience. I really get worried when I feel that people, and especially young people, are leaving the country, not because they, they cannot find a job here, not because they cannot study here, but most, mostly because they don't feel that they belong here anymore in their mind, in their culture, in the, in the way they, they see things. And that's what's, what, what we need to, to address. That's what we need to, to change, because this is what really worries me. Do you think when our generation grows up and, will be able, and provides uh, good uh, leaders, will it be able to change this country? If you keep uh, addressing the issues the same way we and the oldest uh, addressed, no change will happen. Because we're, in a way, dealing with everything in a traditional manner. And what you need is a shock. You need to make things different, to do things differently. You need to take them somewhere where they are not, where it's not their field. Take them to alternatives. Take them to challenge them somewhere where they, they, they don't feel comfortable. I think that young people should start by saying no. You know, when, when you say no, this is a, a good thing to start with. When you start saying, I, I don't agree. When you start saying, this is not how I see it. This, is, this should be the first step. The second step would be, that's not how, how I see it, but that's how I see it. 
and to propose an alternative. Because young people are able to propose alternatives. When um, a friend of mine in school died in a bomb, Muhammad Shah, I think you've heard of him. Of course. Yeah. yeah um, we we had all this anger and all this. We had we had we felt like we had potential to make a change, but we didn't really know what to do. And what do you think? What do you advise youth to do in, in cases where they feel like they want to do to want to make a change and they feel like they can, but they don't know specifically what to do? Rida, I, I followed closely what you did for Muhammad Shah. And I think that you did very well. Uh, don't blame yourself for not doing, because you did the utmost. I don't think you could have done better. Now, what is missing is the following. What did the country do for Hamad Shahar? Uh, what would the country do for others who are paying the price of bad policies and of the fact that we have a failed state in a way? That's, that's the question. I, I cannot understand sometimes how people accept to be, to be uh, ruled by people they don't trust. Speaking of the young, a great person once said, who he bets on the young doesn't lose. What do you think of this quote and uh, why? Well, um, I think that uh, you should give me the address of the betting house to uh, <laughs> because I'm, uh, I'm on. So, we're going to Nimr Abu Nassar Today. right now, right now. now. And we chose like Nimr because he has a good attitude, a perfect mentality, like he knows how to approach problems in a very funny yet wise way. And everyone loves him. Why did you establish your brand of comedy under the creed, no politics, no religion, one love? What was the purpose? I figured that if I do a, a, a comedy scene where there is none of the divisions and there's just talking about everything we have in common, which is society, money problems, relationship problems, driving problems, you know, everyday stuff, the stuff that matters, then I felt I could fill up more people in a room and remind them what they have in common. because. If you're Muslim, you're Christian, I'm just saying, I don't know yeah. what you are, but let's say you're Muslim, you're Christian, you're Jewish, whatever, and you guys are sitting together and I say a joke and all three of you laugh, guess what? It turns out you guys have that in common. What I do address and I have addressed in my shows on the radio, everything is I say, any political person in the country, yeah. fuck you. I've said that. But I do say one thing, I say, I'm not saying they're all bad. Some of them have good intentions. Who I think has good intentions, also a private matter. But some people believe other people have, who am I to judge who's wrong or right? In my opinion, some people have good intentions, but even those people, fuck you. Because you've joined a system that is part of the destruction of our country. And if you're gonna be in that system, you can't change the system. That's the rule of life. You know that saying, don't hate the player, hate the game? Yeah. Yeah, well, if you wanna change the game, you don't join it. If you wanna play basketball, you play basketball. If you want basketball to become football, you can't do that while you're playing, dribbling the ball down the court. You're gonna to have to go to the people who run the basketball association, the crowds who pay the money for the tickets for the basketball association, get the crowd to start demanding that basketball becomes like football and not paying unless it becomes like football. And guess what? Suddenly you've got basketball that's football, but you don't do that on the court. Politics is not, in my opinion, something that you can say is good or bad. Politics reflects society, you understand? Yeah. So if the political system is shit, society's pretty shit. At the end of the day, the way the country runs is decided by us. So, see what happens. You once said that you boycotted like the Lebanese media. Mm -hmm. That's still... Well, why? Because they follow... Certain... I believe Lebanese media is part of the cancer of this country. One of the major problems of this country. So I don't watch the news. I don't watch TV. That TV only has video games connected. I don't have LBC. I don't have anything. I surround myself with friends who don't talk politics, who don't discriminate on religion, and I'm living very happily. Peacefully. Peacefully, happily. I'm working on myself. I'm making myself a better person. I have my views. I have my opinions. And yes, of course, we talk about it when you want to talk about it. But it's boring, man. How, many, how long are you going to talk about Jumblot? Yeah. Are you going to talk about Jaja, Hariri, Oun, Hezbollah? How long? How long? I don't know about how long. Like, there's just like six, seven, how long? Uh, most of the youth in Lebanon look up to you. 
Yeah, he it's because I'm really tall. <laughs> <laughs> you have words of wisdom to tell the youth? No politics, no religion, one love. That would be the only thing. If you live your life like that, you know, you'll end up making a lot of cool friends. You'll eat a lot of great food. If you're Christian, you'll love Ramadan. You know what I'm saying? And if you're Muslim, you'll love Christmas. No, wait, uh, I'm Druze. <laughs> I got the benefit of both. Druze, if you're, if you're Druze, you love Ramadan and Christmas. Yeah. You get to eat on both yeah, days. Exactly. You get invited to both holidays. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Whenever you study, whenever you read, whenever you do something that makes you better as an individual, you're actually helping that change. It's not... Change isn't opening up a Facebook page called change. Yeah. Change is about doing something to make yourself different to suit a specific goal. If you want this country to become better and you believe that the way it can become better is by you leading a life where you can be honest, then you work on yourself being a person of integrity. If you believe that to become a better country, you need to become deceitful, then you work on yourself becoming a more cunning adversary. And everybody, that's how you just work on yourself. And just by doing that, you're affecting change. I think it's kind of hard. I mean, this project, like, we're trying to do so, a few things. But to really bring change, I mean, what are a few teenagers going to do against all these politicians and these, their thousands of followers? No, if, like, if teenagers, we, like, speak up in the society, I guess we can make a big change. Yeah, we, like, we'll, if we, if we like learn to only support something and only do something because we actually believe in it and we don't and, and we're not doing it just because we're being told that we should believe in it i think we, we could have a lot of effect because obviously there are lots of kids and teenagers in lebanon and if we if we do something based on on thinking rather than just being brainwashed into thinking it then i think we could have a large effect and we, we could possibly change lebanon I have hope because before the civil war, I saw some pictures of Lebanon and everyone's, like my grandparents told me how amazing it was before. And I guess that kind of gives us hope that, okay, so it was like that before. If we did it once, we could do it again. <laughs> do you know that this area used to be the place where, uh, like, a border of fighting? They used to fight here, the Muslims and the Christians fight right here, this line. And now we're here together from different sects. Yes, we live. We still laugh, go to school, and meet our friends. We're a fighting nation, always finding the island in an ocean of darkness. But this is the crucial point. We're getting used to all the problems. We dislike politics, hate leaders, feel unsafe, and still we do nothing about it. We live our lives, we go on, and yet we know that it's wrong. I believe that we can make a change. So many people in our generation are unhappy. If we all stand together, we can overcome this sick system, and we can build a country that can be called home by its youth. We are teenagers, not fighters. We don't have guns, but we have words. We can't change the past, but we can determine the future. We can start a mind revolution. Let's start today. Standing still like an empty clock You wanna cry? Welcome to my world They won't stab you with a knife, they slice you with a sword They fight with guns, we defend with words Real pain is the reason I'm here You'll hate what you hear But I walk with spears in my heart and voices in my ear Poor stay poor, rich people rule People of authority do what they wanna do And they teach us to obey the rules I'm only 17 but the kid is no fool Some have
have its own. Some never had food. Politicians work with the mad at mind. They're stealing light to get to the top, then they leave us behind. I think it's a crime. Criminals and politicians are of the same kind. Stealing from the poor, and we still have to pay our fine. But again, this is life. And if it was a game, I'll be the last one to leave. Cause all lost faith, and I still believe. Yeah.